Welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. Today, I'm going to show how easy it is to fix this scuffed bumper yourself for a fraction of the cost you would pay a body shop. So this 2009 Toyota Camry is a victim of a parking lot hit and run. I've already replaced and painted the damaged fender with matching aerosol in previous videos, which I'll put links to in the description. The bumper isn't too bad, so I'm just going to repair it rather than replace it. Let's take a look at the products I'll be using today. Starting with some masking tape and paper. Got some blue shop towels and wax and grease remover. A couple of sanding blocks and a variety of sandpaper ranging from 180 to 600 grit. We have some body filler and a board to mix it on. A low speed orbital buffer. These aren't very expensive. I have some polishing compound to go with that. And a tack cloth to wipe off any dust before painting. For this project, I'm going to use some filler primer to fill the light scratches. Adhesion promoter to help bond to bare plastic. Some perfect match paint and this is formulated to match the OEM color. And some lacquer clear coat. Last but not least, a half mask to keep all these products out of my lungs since I'm doing this in my garage. Now this might look like a lot, but I have most of these left over from my fender paint video and I'm going to be using them again in the future when I fix a rust spot on the car. I do paint work from time to time, so I tend to buy things in bulk sizes. You could get smaller containers of body filler and wax and grease remover and be all in around 75 bucks, maybe less if you shop around. All right, let's get started. I just finished painting the fender and haven't even bolted it on yet, so I'm just going to pull it back off instead of masking it off with tape. If the fender, grill, and headlights are okay on your car, just mask them off with tape to protect them from the work you're about to do to the bumper. First, it's important to start with a clean surface. Even though I washed the car with soap and water, wax and grease remover will remove even more contaminants from the surface. I'm going to be sanding soon, so I don't want to grind any contaminants or wax into the surface that I'll be painting. It's good to clean a large area around the repair spot. Look at that nasty grime that came off with the wax and grease remover. And give it a few minutes to evaporate completely. Here is some 180 grit sandpaper and a sanding block. This paper is kind of rough and it's going to scuff up the smooth surface to sand down any high points and so that the body filler will adhere better. On these light scuffs, I'm only sanding the clear coat. There's no need to go too deep because the scratches aren't that bad. This deeper gouge down here needs a little more sanding because there was a raised area on the edge of the scratch. That's better. The edge feels smooth now. I sanded through the clear here and you can see a darker gray ring around the area which is the color coat. And then beneath that is a light gray which is the factory primer. I'll stop there because the factory primer is well adhered to the bumper. And now that it's all scuffed to 180 grit I have a good contact surface for the body filler. I'm wiping the surface down again with the wax and grease remover to remove all sanding dust as well as any oils for my hands. And then I gave it a couple of minutes to evaporate. Now it's time to apply the body filler. It's pretty simple to use. Just mix the filler and hardener per the instructions on the can and using a spreader lightly squeegee it over the deep scratch. A light skim coat is fine. Go too thick and you'll have extra standing to do. You can always add more if needed. I put a really light layer over the other areas I sanded just to fill in any deeper scratches that I didn't get down to with the 180 grit sandpaper. The body filler has fully cured now and I'm going to sand with the 180 grit again to knock down any high points from when I applied the filler. I'm also going outside of the original repair area to be sure I sand all of the body filler I applied. You can see I've evenly sanded the whole area with 180 grit. Now the deep scratches have been filled in and the body filler sanded down flush with the surface. In body work, you take care of the big imperfections first, like that gouge, and then worry about the smaller scratches left over from the sandpaper. So I have a uniform surface to work with now, sanded with 180 grit. Yep, more wax and grease remover. A clean surface is so important here. It's time to knock down these 180 grit scratches with some 320 grit paper. The higher the number, the finer the grit. 
so it'll leave smaller scratches than the 180 grit I used before. As the paper grit gets finer and less abrasive, less material will be removed. So that's why it's important to sand with each grit instead of jumping straight to the final grit. Notice I'm sanding slightly outside of the previously sanded area and it's all right that the repair area is growing. It's better to go a little past the 180 grit scratches with the 320 paper than to miss some of the 180 grit scratches and have them show up when the paintwork is all done. Wax and grease time. Now it's time for paint and I have the surrounding areas masked off to protect them from overspray. The primer I'm using here is a filler primer. It's a high build formula, which means it's a little thicker, perfect for filling in any minor imperfections. But first, after cleaning the sanding dust away, I see I sanded all the way through the factory primer, exposing the plastic bumper. To be sure the primer bonds to the plastic, I'm going to use this adhesion promoter, which is ideal for automotive plastics. I'm only going to apply this on the areas where I sanded down to the plastic. It's easy to sand too far, and this quick step will help the primer bond to the plastic bumper. And this stuff dries really fast. Now the adhesion promoter has dried and I can apply some filler primer. It's a high build formula, but that doesn't mean I should spray it on heavy. Light coats are the best way to avoid runs and they dry faster than heavy coats. I let the first coat of filler primer dry and now I'm going to apply a second coat. I'm mainly focusing on the repair area here. I let that coat dry and it's time for another coat of filler primer. And another. I want to be sure I apply enough coats to fill in all those scratches left from the 320 grip paper. Four coats should do it. I don't see any more visible scratches. I do see a run though. I sprayed a little heavy in this spot. No big deal. After the primer is dried, I can just sand that run out using a sanding block and some more of the 320 grip paper. Now I'm using some 400 grit on a sanding sponge, which is a little more flexible than a block. I'm sanding the entire repair area with the 400 grit paper and a little bit outside. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing again with some 600 grit paper. Now I have a smooth surface ready for paint. I'm wiping it all down with some wax and grease remover going way outside the repair area this time since I'm ready to paint. And I went through the primer again when sanding with the 400 and 600 grit paper. It's easy to do, especially on a raised area or an edge. The rest of the surface is clean, sanded and smooth, so I'll just hit that bare plastic with a little bit of adhesion promoter. The rest of the area looks great. I have a can of color matched paint for this car's paint code that I read on the VIN sticker. Magnetic Gray Metallic 1G3. This is the same paint I used to paint the fender. I'm spraying light coats, covering the entire repair area, and then some. The goal is to feather the edge of the new paint with the factory paint. You can see it looks splotchy and that is fine for a first coat. Heavy coats can run and take a lot longer to dry. And that really adds a lot of time to this project. The first coat is dry, so I'm applying the second coat, still light to prevent any runs. Also, still feathering the edge with the factory paint. Now it's time for the last color coat, which will be the wet coat. It's a little heavier than the others because this helps to fill in any of the lighter spray areas from the first two coats and will help the finish to look more glossy. I'm being careful not to go too heavy or I might get a run. I let the wet coat dry per the instructions on the can and next I'm going to apply the clear coat. But first, I need to clean the surface with a tack cloth. Bet you thought I was going to say wax and grease remover there, huh? The tack cloth is just a tacky rag that grabs any dust on the surface. It picks up fine contaminants that I can't even see with my eyes. Now it's time for clear. The clear is a lacquer, just like the color coats. Mixing lacquer and enamel aerosols can sometimes cause the paint to react funny and lift. So be sure to stick with one or the other. I'm doing a really light coat to start. And then another light coat. You guessed it. Another light coat. Now it's time for that glossy wet coat. Same as the color wet coat, go heavier but not heavy enough to cause a run. If you get a run, let it dry, wet sand it out up to some 600 grit and then pick back up with the clear coats. There's some orange peel but that's going to come out when I polish the area. Professional urethane paint self levels much better than lacquer because lacquer paint starts to atomize or dry 
as soon as it leaves the nozzle, so it doesn't lay down as smooth. But I'm gonna fix that later with the polishing compound. The clear is dried, and look at the original paint on the front of the bumper compared to the dull paint on the repair area. Wet sanding and polishing is a step for any paint job to look perfect, including do-it-yourself aerosols. The orange peel isn't even bad enough that I need to wet sand. Because lacquer paint is soft compared to urethane, especially when it's new, I only need to polish to get it to match the original paint. I apply some cutting compound and buff the paint using a terry cloth pad on a low speed orbital buffer. An expensive, variable, high speed buffer isn't necessary when you're polishing out lacquer aerosol paint. You could actually polish this by hand if you wanted to, using a terry cloth and some polishing compound, but if you have a large area, it's a lot faster to use the buffer. After polishing, I let the car sit in the sun for a couple days to fully cure the paint and then put a coat of wax over the new paint to seal and protect it. I saved a lot of money and did this job right here in my garage and so can you. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section, I read them all. As always, thanks for watching and subscribe for more how-to videos and project vehicle updates here at the 6th Gear Garage.